Hello, my name's Stephen Ball and in this short video I'm going to be showing you how you can take your objects and persist them to remote data store and pull them back using Pass and Kinvi uh, as two different back-end service solutions. Now, to use these um, solutions, the first thing we need to be able to do is have a provider that allows us to talk to them and um, with Rad Studio we have um, a provider component for both Pass and Kinvi which take their specific settings and in fact I've got one set up here on a, a data module already. Um, literally I've not changed any of the properties here for them um, but I do have this little bit of code here that just allows me to very quickly demo them uh, on either one or the other with my secret values just defined as a set of constants um, at the top here hidden away. And that's it, that's all you need to do to set up your connection. Um, by putting these components down, it also adds in um, rest.openSSL. So you do need to make sure that the OpenSSL libraries are provided with your application. Um, very, very easy to do. Um, and have a look at DocWiki for that. Uh, literally just copy, copy a couple of files along with your application. So once we've got the providers set, we're then ready to go and use um, the components that use those providers to access the services. Uh, and this means that we can use either Pass or Kim V very, very simply by using the same component. So let's use a backend query here quickly first. And the great thing here, we can come in here, let's have a uh, maybe a backend class, which we could call um, customer. And if we hook up to a provider, let's just go add to our uses, our data module. Um, maybe let's use Pass. And then a back-end service, we'll use the storage. So automatically it picks those up from the provider. Um, now what we can do, let's just go bind visually and maybe have a memo control for the results and uh, a memo control for a query. Uh, let's just align that to the top. Uh, put this one to the bottom here. And... Let's just put a, a button in the middle here just to be able to execute our query. So all we need to do really is just do backend query one dot execute, uh, and that will be it. So if we go run this, no query. We can see we've got some data back. It's empty data because there's no um, objects currently up in our store. Uh, if we actually let's just change this over to the other provider and uh, let's go rerun it. We can see here we've actually got some data um, come back um, because we do actually have some objects up on, on that store. So very, very easy to go and access into the data. And you say you know, literally one line of code. Um, what we really want to do though is be able to persist up objects, pull objects back and so on. So just to show you that, I've um, got a little demo that I made a little bit earlier. And um, on here we're using both the backend query and the backend storage. Um, literally it's uh, just the same as what we just had a look at. Uh, let's just go bind visually, we'll be able to have a quick look behind the scenes here. And all I've implemented here is the fetch which we've just seen. Uh, the ability to add an object and to delete an object by its ID. Now these objects are uh, based on a T customer. Uh, it's a very simple object here, nothing kind of complex around it, but um, three published properties for phone number, uh, name, and uh, just a random foo one, um, because I was testing to see what happened if you added a property and it just works, um, which is nice. Um, to Let's start off with the fetch code here. So we've got the query, the results, uh, and also a list view here. So the first one which we've just seen is just executing a query, collecting back the data, and, and, and taking it from there. Um, but I've extended that through here just to take, um, take the query string, but also to go and get this um, T customer data into this backend object list. Now, a backend object list is basically a bit like a T list that's defined through generics, and here we've got the, the T customer. But it also has alongside each of those objects a corresponding object that tells you about the backend storage data 
so in terms of the ID, when it was created and so on. Uh, and that's very specific data that you can go and get. Uh, and we see here, we just literally iterate through each of the items that's returned back to this customer's list, uh, and then simply add a list view item, put in the name, the phone number, and then use the customer's entity value to get the object ID. Uh, and there's a whole set of different things that you can try and do from here in terms of uh, finding out when it expires, usernames, file names, tokens, and so on. So that literally fetches back our, our objects and we can then work with a, a customer object here as we would do in normal code. Um, to post the object there in the first place, uh, let's have a look at the add. So here we're literally just adding, creating a T customer, setting its name and its phone number and a foo property, and then just calling backend storage, um, create an object of type T customer, and then we're passing in the remote storage name that we want to use, in this case customer, which is what we just saw in the first demo. Um, and then uh, getting the L value back here, um, which is the backend entity value. That's the other object that I was talking about that goes along with the objects when you request the list of them. And from there we can get the object ID and we can put it into the deleted object ID. Um, and then to delete one, simple one line of code, just delete object, passing in again the class name that you referenced it to remotely and then the value that you want to delete. So let's have a look at that running here. So let's go ahead and run the quick fetch and we can see um, the data come back and the objects fetched um, from this uh, JSON and we can do things like here like limits equals one and let's uh, run that again and we can now see we've only got one object returned but within the packets here we can see the created and the ID and so on. Um, the add, um, maybe we can add in Craig here um, and put him as 34567 and just go and add and uh, let's go rerun, uh, well let's just take this out here and rerun our fetch and we can now see that we've got Craig in there with his object ID and if we go to deleted and delete and then rerun our fetch we can now see that that object's been deleted so very, very simple and easy to use. If we go and have a quick look at what's online now, and um, here's my pass um, portal. Um, no objects in here at the moment, although I have added one and deleted one earlier. Uh, and then on my Kinvi uh, console, uh, under add-ons, you can go to uh, data storage, data store, and you can then see the data that you got um, posted online underneath your collections. So that's about it from me. Happy coding and enjoy using the new pass and can be components.